Hi. Today we're going to uh, talk about a big block Chevrolet. Um, we've done pretty extensive machine work on cylinder heads and we've, we've done some assembly on some engine blocks, but we really haven't gone through any uh, block machining to speak of. And so we, we have a customer that sometimes a customer will come to you and they don't have their engine. Uh, they don't have an engine for their car, which is the case in this, in this situation. So we actually went and got an engine block and we're gonna tear it down and uh, do some work on it. So if you take a look at this engine here, this is our core engine and it seems to be in pretty good shape. Um, one of the things that is notable is that the engine does turn over and if you look in this cylinder over here, it's got a little bit of a ridge but it's not too bad. I can kind of feel that with my finger which means that um, it probably needs to be bored. We have a camshaft in this engine that came with it, but uh, the guy offered me the lifters, but I didn't take them because we're obviously not going to reuse this cam, so we'll just be scrapping this cam out. Um, if you take a look at the oil pan down here, it, it is pretty, pretty nasty and dirty. Um, it looks like it's got some, some particles down at the bottom of it, so um, I'm not sure if that's metal or if that's just grime and, and carbon and things of, of that nature at this point. But uh, we definitely had uh, a pretty dirty engine here. It doesn't look like they really changed their oil like they should have. So if we take and we turn this motor over now, we uh, turn this over and look at the other side and see what we got. Okay, a couple things that I see right off the bat here. Um, I can tell that this motor's been into before simply because you see that you see that punch mark right there that is a number one and if you look at this one over here this rod has a number two on it those are definitely not factory punches that somebody has actually numbered these with a punch they've also stamped the looks like they've stamped the connecting rods with some numbers here number one there two three and so forth also if you look in here I can see that this engine has a double roller timing chain. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's definitely got an aftermarket chain on it. So somebody has definitely been into this engine. Now, I want you to look at this pickup screen here because this is what happens quite often. I want you to look right at that pickup screen and make a mental note of this. This is, uh, this is not something you want to have in your pickup screen. It is actually silicone sealer. It's not a good idea to put a lot of silicone sealer. If you look at this, look at this silicone over here. It's not a good idea to put a lot of silicone sealer like this on your oil pan. I have actually seen silicone sealer get sucked up into this pickup screen here and go in and lock up the oil pump and it literally drive, uh, break the oil pump drive shaft. So that's not something you want. That's, 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 that's definitely a problem. We need to, we're gonna have to remedy that. We're probably gonna have to replace that pickup screen for sure. So it looks like we got a pretty good short block here. The pistons, these pistons don't look factory to me. They look like they've been replaced. And I can actually see, come on over here, Dave. I want them to see this. Is it, turn that light on on that thing. I guess I should have grabbed the flashlight, but I want you to see this. If you look down in here, I can still see the crosshatch on that cylinder right in there. The crosshatch is still visible. The pistons look like they've been replaced. The rods, if you look at the rods, you can tell that the crankshaft is a completely different color than the rods. What that tells me is that these rods were cleaned at some point and probably resized at a machine shop. They probably just polished the crank up, or maybe they didn't even do that and put new bearings on it. But the rods, you can tell by the discoloration that the rods have definitely been removed and, and reworked, most likely, and put back in the engine. So that's our basic short block. Um, the other test for any short block is to make sure that it rotates. And it looks like this one's rotating pretty freely. So don't really have any binding or any, any issues, for, any broken down here on the lower end, so 
I think we've got a pretty solid builder here. We're, we're definitely going to have to take it apart, do quite a bit of disassembly and cleaning. The cleaning process is extensive anytime you do a rebuild. Um, I get a kick out of those shows on TV like uh, uh, Speed TV or High Performance Hot Rod TV where they, they bring in this old piece of crap car, you know, and 45 minutes later, hey, they got the whole engine rebuilt, they got turbochargers on it. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. They're leaving a whole bunch of stuff out of those shows. Same thing with like Hot Rod Magazine or any of those uh, tuner type magazines. They really don't give you the full story. I would say probably 50 to 60% of a rebuild is disassembly, cleaning, and inspection. It's a lot of work to clean these things up. So we're gonna walk, I'm gonna walk you through that process because there's a lot of little things that are pretty important that you need to do when you take these things apart. Um, the cleaning process is absolutely critical to a solid rebuild. Then the next step is solid machine work. So there's three step to, steps to any rebuild. There's disassembly, cleaning, and inspection, which is one step. Has to be done correctly, or the end result's not, not going to uh, be the desired result. It's probably going to fail. The second step is quality machine work, good quality machine work. Um, that also has to be done right, and that makes a good foundation for your build. And then, of course, the third and final step is the blueprinting and the assembly process. And there's a lot to that. Um, and so we're going to walk through that, and hopefully this will help you. And I wanted to pick a, I did a, a Mopar Chrysler engine last time. I wanted to use a Chevy because, you know, I know there's a bunch of big block Chevy fans out there, and everybody's saying, hey, how come you're doing Mopar? Why don't you do a Chevy? Well, we got a big block Chevy here. So we're, we're going to do it up. And uh, so tune in, keep an eye on these videos. And in the next video, we're going to tear this sucker down and see what we find. So until then, thank you.